Today, I'm gonna to give you guys a shop tour, show you how I organize my workspace. Hey guys. So today, I'm gonna to give you guys a tour of my workshop. I've actually had a few requests from you guys about this and that kind of shocked me. I didn't think anyone would have any interest in seeing where I work, but if there's ever something that you guys wanna see or if you have a uh, video idea for me, then by all means reach out to me, leave a comment below or talk to me on Instagram, something like that. Let me know, I'm happy to do videos that uh, you guys wanna see. So, since I've had a few requests about this, I figured it was about time. I'm just sitting in my basement right now. I started leatherworking in the kitchen actually and it, uh, it was a huge pain to be on the kitchen table doing my leather stuff and then dinner time would come and I would have to pack it all down, put it in the garage and it's just, annoying packing everything up and having to move it after after you finish so if you are able to have a leather shop it's for sure worth it because then you can just you know leave everything how you want it come back to it down the road it's been pretty game-changing for me having a, a workbench here uh speaking of which this is my workbench this is not how it normally looks it's normally a, a, a minor disaster here while i'm working on something i cleaned it up just before this video just to give you guys an idea of what it's supposed to look like, but this is what it looks like normally. It's uh, a bit of a mess as you can see, but that's just kind of how I work. I start something, I work on it until I'm done, and then I clean everything up afterwards. So right now I'm in the middle of working on a, a wallet. I have quite a big queue of things to make still, and we're just kind of plugging away on it. So this workbench I actually built myself. It's made of a few two by fours and a couple sheets of plywood. Super basic, I am not the greatest uh, woodworker, so this was around my skill level. Uh, this is actually the second one of these I made. I made one as a workbench in my garage, so. Uh, this is the same thing, except this one's on wheels, so I can roll it around. I think I paid just over $100 Canadian for everything for this, super cheap. Super basic, it's solid. I do all my punching and everything on here and I've never had an issue. I will link the plans down below. They're from AnnaWhite.com. It's a, a site that just gives all kinds of free woodworking templates. It's not really anything fancy, but free is always good and uh, <laughs> it's uh, around the skill level that I'm capable of doing. So if you take a look at the table here, it is about, uh, it's probably three feet by about four feet or maybe two and a half feet by four feet I'd say it's uh it's not the biggest table but it lets me put a side of uh, leather down if I want and cut it up so what I normally have on top ready to go here is this is a notebook where I write down ideas and record dimensions and uh, really just anything related to my leather work I recommend having something paper and pen that you can write on really quick I've made a few custom jobs and not recorded the dimensions and then wished I had after the fact because then you have to figure everything out again. So I definitely recommend using a notebook for just jotting stuff down. If you look on the desk here, I actually have two lamps mounted to the desk. These are the same Ikea lamps that Ryan from Little King Goods recommended in one of his videos. They are super hard to beat. I think they're $15 each and they move up and down and I can get them down close to my work and easily pivot them out of the way. Um, they're great work lights, super cheap. They do what I need them to do. They don't need to be anything fancy. Mounted to the desk right here, I have my Wing & Wave Design Stitching Pony. I can't remember what I paid for this thing. I think $110 US and it's been amazing. I used a homemade stitching pony that I made out of a couple 2x4s and some wood clamps for a long time before buying this and I honestly wish I bought this sooner. It's up there in uh, equipment I'd say you should get early on. It'll make your life way easier. One part of my leather shop that's a bit different is I also do YouTube here so I have a lot of different uh, photography and videography kinds of things. So. Uh, I always like to keep, this is my uh, Godox, it's a 
big like studio light with a big soft box on it. This thing just lets me control my lighting. Oh, didn't work. This thing just lets me control my lighting and turn it up and down. And it's for the 200 and something dollars that I paid for this light, it's made a huge difference. These uh, Ikea lights are really good for doing the leather work, but they're not so good for, uh, for pictures and, and video. They, uh, they aren't bright enough. You need a surprising amount of light to film video. And uh, yeah, this thing is amazing. It's not so great to work with. Uh, when I do videos where I'm working, it's a little bit of a pain because it's too bright, but such is uh, life when you're trying to do YouTube videos. On the left side of my desk, I have a screw where I hang my barber strop. I also have a string that has jeweler's rouge on it. And this is kind of my stropping station. With the barber strop, I strop all my knives and everything. And with the string, I strop my edge beveler. Off to my right here, I have another bunch of different rulers squares, things hanging to help me cut straight edges. Further to my right here, I keep a little cutting board and then hanging on the edge of my bench here, I have my big cutting board. Cutting mat, cutting board, whatever. If you're doing leather work, you need one of these cutting mats. There's no way around it. If you're cutting leather, you need sharp tools. Your tools will cut anything underneath the leather. So let me take you over to my left. I have this rolling husky tool chest and I got this one more recently and this has been amazing to have. So you can see on top here I leave just a bunch of stuff that I need regularly. Stuff that I need to be more accessible. So I have my punching mat, I have a little rag here, my sandpaper collection. I like to use a, different, a whole lot of different grits of sandpaper, so keep those up here. Back here I keep my various threads. I don't have too many right now. I have some spare batteries back here. A little bit more thread. This is also tiger thread. Just This is a small amount that I got when I first started leather work. I have some little thread snipped things. Of course, binder clips. These things are amazing. I have my sheath that I made in the challenge video. And you can see the button's still staying on. Everything's still good. Oh, I got glue. I use like the most basic glue you can get. It's $10 from Home Depot, I think. And I don't know. Contact cement works for me. For burnishing, I like to use tokenol. I use a wood burnisher. And I like to finish with a canvas bag. Right here, I have my ice cube tray full of waxes, as well as I keep a few needles in here. And then my thread melting things. I prefer the thread zap. I know a lot of people. I prefer the thread zap. I know a lot of people aren't a fan. I am. But I also have lighters. I use John James needles. These are the best needles for leather work. And for 10 bucks, I have 25 of them. And I'm still using the first few that I pulled out of there ever. So, so this is my drawer full of my most used tools. I have my cutting tools off to the left here. In the middle, I have a French skiver, a couple awls, uh, my wing dividers, my edge beveler, uh, my maul, my punches. Basically, every all your basic leather working tools, they're all in my first drawer here. It's just the easiest one to grab. In the second drawer here, it's kind of a combination. It's tools that I use sometimes. Um, 
it has all my like packaging things as well as uh, my rivets and hardware and stuff like that. Uh, my rouge is in here. I have a pair of gloves if I need them. All my business cards. I have a collection of other people's stickers and cards and stuff as I get them. If you guys have stickers for your business and want to send them to me, then get in touch with me. I am going to do something with them at some point. So yeah, if you want your sticker somewhere in my shop, then give me a shout and I'll let you know where you can send it. In the next drawer down, we have, this is mostly photography gear and props. So you can see this is for the audio recorder that I just got. You're actually listening to it right now. This is uh, a cord for a mic that I'm buying. Um, various notebooks, a cigar box full of other props. A couple wood bowls and just various photography things. This is actually the first leather anything that I made. Moving down to the last drawer, it is mainly my leather scraps. This is one of three scrap bins. I have some other stuff. I have leather dyes and stuff that I don't really use. This is a box of my very first leather tools. Uh, they're not the greatest, but I still keep them because of the first, first tools that I ever got. This is kind of my photography station. It's just a little uh, cart on wheels here that I put a chunk of wood or, or some kind of surface onto, and then I take all my pictures on here. It's funny because it's one of those things that you don't realize when you get into leather work is that if you actually want to sell stuff, you need to become a photographer as well. So it's not something that I thought I would need to try to get good at, and I still don't think I'm amazing at it, but I'm definitely learning. And uh, the more I learn and the better gear I get, I can see in my sales that uh, it's, it's a pretty important part of leather working. So if you can afford to set up a little photography station, it's, it's gonna help you sell leather. I'm still not even a year into leather work. So this is what I work with. This is, <laughs> it, it all seems to work for me. There's definitely things that I uh, plan on adding eventually. I'd like to get a, a clicker press for one. I'd also like to get a laser uh, as well as uh, maybe a, a power sander burnisher, but one step at a time, right? Like I'm, I'm still doing everything by hand and that's, I kind of want to keep everything as uh, handmade as I can, but, but some of the stuff is just killer. If I could use a, a power burnisher, that would save me so much time and I'm someone who I only get to work when my daughter's asleep on my days off so I'm limited as to how much time I can actually leather work so that kind of stuff is gonna help me get there I'm not that into using a leather sewing machine I do have a, a Chinese shoe patcher let's say hand crank uh, leather sewing machine that uh, a buddy of mine, Vera Forma Leather, lent to me a while back and I, I still need to fix that up and get it on a stand and and try to do some stuff with that. I think that would be a cool video too. For those of you who are looking at those, they're like under 200 bucks on Amazon. So if you have any suggestions or questions or anything, leave them below in the comments or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or by email. Uh, if you could like the video, that helps me out a lot. If you could subscribe, that helps me out too. But otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.